Lars von Trier is somewhat of a very mixed director. Either you love him or you hate him. On one side, you like he's a masterful director. Everything he makes is a work of art. Mwah, mwah, I love him. And on the other side, you like he's a disgusting and vile director. He's a misogynistic blah blah blah. You know, and me personally, I am not on either side. Like, I think that like some of his movies and his filmography are great. Like Dancer in the Dark is a beautiful and bleak and depressing movie. Which I recommend if you're up for some depressing times. Then he's directed some things like Nymphomaniac, which I find pretentious and just boring and just goes, you know, again, it's how, you know, some people love that film. I don't. I definitely do not. But yeah, Lars von Trier is a very mixed director when it comes to me. I either love him or I hate him in certain movies. Now, whenever a Lars von Trier movie comes out, there's always a bit of anticipation because Lars von Trier has gained a massive fan base over the years for as much his entire attitude of just not giving a fuck, just wanting to shock the audience, you know, being like, here, I don't want you to have a good time on my films. And honestly, I think that's kind of admirable in director when, you know, he just wants to make something and he's not worried about how the audience is going to feel. He just wants to make his own art, which I find very admirable. But then again, there can be some bad side effects, because that art could be bad, okay? I will agree that all Lars von Trier films are indeed works of art, even if some of them are not good works of art. But they're art nonetheless, it'd be silly to, you know, argue otherwise. With the new Lars von Trier feature film, The House That Jack Built, there's been a lot of anticipation and a lot of scathing reviews coming from early film festival reviews from, like, the Cannes Film Festival. There was a mass walkout throughout that film festival and this is what is known as the unrated cut which they showed at that film festival and I'll see a Von Trier film without a mass walkout is I mean come on that's that's kind of what we were all expecting that's that's usual with Lars Von Trier to have you know a mass walkout and honestly this entire thing it's good marketing okay and it's gonna have people excited to see it because like okay so they're calling this movie vomitive torturous and vile well that's gonna make the person want to see it even more so, that has people excited, and me, I don't pay too much attention because, I mean, it's a film festival, it's, people usually just have, you can't trust those type of opinions. So I decided to see the film for myself, see how I thought of it, and I'm very mixed on it. At first, I uh, kind of disliked it, so, and it's more of like, I thought about it, I was like, you know what, I have so much thoughts about this movie that I'm going to have to make a video. So let's just, you know, go bit by bit, piece by piece. The way the movie is structured is very interesting. It's pretty much presented in the style of Matt Dillon, who plays Jack, is telling the stories of these five incidents where, you know, he's killing people, all this stuff, and he's telling this all to someone who is called Verge, and he's having this discussion about life and death, all, all this, like, architecture, pianos, lampposts, you know, art, all, all icons in history, just those kind of topics. It's very much weighted, there's a lot of that heavy expository dialogue. And look, in my opinion, I just think it is what it is, it's exposition, okay? There's too much heavy-fisted exposition here, and my problem here, it gets very repetitive with the editing, okay? The editing here just kind of repeats clips, okay? You keep on seeing, they keep bringing up themes and symbolism. And I think this is a very lazy way of trying to present, you know, what your movie could mean, because you pretty much explain it to the audience of like, okay, it means this, which leaves no room for interpretation. Now, many people may like that. They're like, oh, it's these characters explaining it. But I, I, it's very expository, just dump. It's an exp exposition dump upon the audience, and it gets very weird. And this movie is a very long movie. This movie is two hours and 30 minutes. That's a very long run time. Okay, and you really feel it in certain aspects. Now, I think the first act is very solid. So let's get to the first act, all right? Now, there is still some, like I say, it starts out with some bizarre dialogue, okay? Like, the exposition isn't too heavy in the first act. It's kind of, you know, it's 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 sane okay? It's, it, we can handle it. However, the dialogue with Uma Thurman's character, who isn't in the film for very long, it's very bizarre. Because it just feels very stilted and awkward, and it's like, what kind of human being talks like this? And you can argue that Lars von Trier wanted to do this, because later on in the film, he has this entire thing where... has this entire thing where Jack pretty much explains that, you know, all these stories are just the, these women being naive, and, you know, he's deciding to tell these stories, so yeah, it could have some purpose in there, which I can totally see on, you know, multiple, you know, viewings when you've seen this, you're like, okay, I can kind of see where this fits in. Seeing how Jack is going to kill all these people, 
it's it's a very interesting tone Lars von Trier brings up because it's not completely like torture porn fest, like it's just very bleak and miserable. It's almost like a dark comedy of sorts, like because there's certain parts where he's like he's trying to murder this person, he's like, oh my god, what I've done. So he tries to help him back up in this one scene. And then he's like, okay, I can't let this person live. Boom, kills him. And of course he has OCD, so he has this compulsion to clean every murder scene. And it's very darkly hilarious in those certain aspects. And I really love that tone that they were going for in the first act. It does kind of go away as the movie goes on, I feel, in the second and third act. But I feel like in the first act, it's very solid, okay? You've got some weird editing choices, okay? Now, of course, I don't think the editing is a flaw of the movie. It's a very stylistic choice of Lars von Trier. He gets this choppy editing. I don't I don't know, though. The thing is, I see it's a style he's going for, but I don't see the purpose of having this editing style, okay? Like, he's trying to make things more, maybe, claustrophobic or something, make you feel more closed in the film with a shaky cam and editing. I get that, but I don't see the choppy editing and the purpose of that. And him repeating clips of the tiger and the lion, and the you know the piano playing scenes, it's just, it gets very tiring, because we already get it, we've already seen it, so having it reinforced in our heads, I just think is very lazy. There's scenes where there is a certain thing established earlier on in the film, that then get brought up later on, he's like, we, we, okay, that's just... It makes the audience kind of feel like they're dumb, I feel, because you're just showing the same clip over again. He's like, ah, hey, remember this? I don't think that's a good way of telling your story, but that's, again, my personal opinion. Now, I wanted to acknowledge some of the criticism for this film. Now, there's been a lot of criticism, believe me, from talking about how misogynistic this movie is, how violent it is and vile, you know, all that stuff. But there are certain things that I wanted to address that I think is just misunderstood now. There's a certain section in this film where they're talking about icons in history, and there's a lot of footage of some anti-Semitic stuff. Okay, we got some footage of Hitler coming in, and he's talking about the great icons of history. And because of this, people are thinking, Lars von Trier is a Nazi. Now, this makes sense for people thinking this, kind of, because of a few years ago. In his Cannes Film Festival conference, he was talking... He said this in a ridiculous speech, which, of course, he, you know, years later said is a joke. But he's talking about how... I'll just show the clip instead. No, I really wanted to be a Jew, and, I, and then I found out that I was really a Nazi. You know, uh, because my family was German, Hartmann. Sir. I, 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 I... What can I say? Um, I, I understand Hitler. But uh, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I think he did some wrong things. Yes, absolutely. But 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 I I, I can see him sitting in his, in his bunker in the end. <laughs> but I, there will come a point at the, at the end of this. Okay, I'm a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different note. Um. Yeah, it's pretty painful to watch, especially you know Kirsten Dunst's entire reaction there. But I think it is very clear that, you know, he was just doing this bad joke here, and that doesn't mean he's actually a Nazi. So people thinking that this movie represents, like, you know, his, the entire thing with viewing Hitler as this icon of history. I do not believe Lars von Trier actually thinks that. Like, yes, he's an auteur. This, you know, movie is definitely his art, but then again, it is his art. This movie is talking about a serial killer and how he views the world, okay? And of course, some Lars von Trier's entire perspective of how like, people just look the other way and ignore things that are happening, like the entire scene where, of course, Matt Dillon's performance, which is great in the scene, where he's talking about how no one's gonna come, you know, even if you scream for help, no one cares. And you can definitely see some of Lars von Trier's, you know, like some of his, like what he thinks, his beliefs coming into it. But that scene, I think, is absolutely just the character talking, how he would view, you know, great icons of history. It's just, it's that character perspective. This is definitely a character study, and through the progression of all these killings and murders, we definitely see his character develop from the first incident to the second incident. There's always some development that's going on from incident to incident, and this particular segment shows how he feels about, of course, icons of history and how he views Hitler, and then he gets this more warped up, you know, perception, and I think that this is what that scene is showing, and also there's a, a complaint about Lars von Trier's entire ego fill in this movie, and that complaint comes from, of course, the footage being used when he's talking about violence in films, and there's footage being used from Lars von Trier's previous films like Melancholia, and people are like, oh, look, he's just giving him bit, himself a big ego boost, which, 
I can definitely see where they're coming from, but I, I don't know, that doesn't affect me too much. Like, with my criticism of the film, that's far from my biggest issue, because I just see that as just like, uh, whatever, who cares. I don't think, like, oh my god, it ruins a film, because it's just, it's just very distracting. I mean, like, in the context of the film, it makes sense. They're talking about how, you know, violence in art can affect us greatly, and of course, it's kind of an ego boost to just, you know, shove your own art into there, like, showing your own films and how, how they've impacted us. It's very much a narcissist, you know, type of thing to do. But it doesn't bother me that much as for a criticism for the film. And then again, if he, di if he didn't use his own clips, then what clips of other films would he use? Like, would he just... I'm not sure if, it, like, the rights and everything would work by using other movies as, like, examples of violence. So maybe just using his own movies as an example is just an easier explanation for all that. There's many ways you could interpret that. Now, there's also been a common complaint about the violence in this film. How, of course, it's just disgusting, and Lars von Trier is very much a shock type of director. He's going to show things that are going to make you uncomfortable to provoke a response. You know, he doesn't have to touch those buttons all up inside of you. He's been doing this for years with film Antichrist, and just, he makes really, you know, a Nymphomaniac is another example of him doing a lot of gross out stuff, like a scene where a character performs a self abortion and showing it in such graphic detail. Lars von Trier is very common with using this. When you see violence against children, of course, I do not like seeing violence against children. I'm fine with its use in the film if it gets a point across, and I feel like, in this case, it definitely does, because this is all showing how far, you know, this serial killer has gone down. We see him from the beginning, he just sees kind of this weird dude, and then later on, he's like, we see how he thinks about it, and it's, this entire film is a character study on Jack and how he views the world and his perception of course. As I mentioned Lars von Trier's own personal things about how the world reacts to certain situations and gets implemented into the film but it is a character study and I think showing that is important to convey the kind of horror this guy can do and we get a brilliant scene about how his shame he feels just kind of builds up to him and it's like a shadow behind him so then he has to move to the next lamppost and then it's in balance but then you know, he's going to feel it again, so he has to move on to the next lamppost, of course, representing the murders. So, of course, when murders one person, moves on to the next. I think that scene brilliantly illustrates the point of this character and how he works with his killings. And, of course, he mentions how he feels about each of the crimes. And, yeah, of course, there's the Lars von Trier kind of dialogue, which kind of ruins it, where it's very much kind of like self-aware. It's just like, you dare describe killing children? That is the most despicable thing, kind of like representing the audience, how it feels. He did that in Nymphomaniac too, where the guy was like, how could you describe, you know, the abortion in such detail, like how we just saw the scene? He does that a lot in his films, where it's, it's just characters spouting out. And that's the part I do not like, is that kind of dialogue. That is terrible dialogue. But I, I don't think the violence in this film is a problem because it is a part of the character and it serves a purpose. Now there is one aspect to the film that I absolutely fell in love with and that is the performance by Matt Dillon. It is honestly fantastic, laid with so much just complexities. It's, it's a fantastic performance and the best of Matt Dillon's entire career. Undoubtedly, like, his performance in this film is what this film is worth seeing for, like, I think the movie shot competently, shot well, of course Lars von Trier is a skilled director in those terms. I'm not a fan of his editing, personally, but that's a stylistic choice. I'm not a fan of his dialogue, though, in this film. The dialogue was terrible, so as, you know, I already mentioned how I didn't like those certain aspects of this film and its presentation. I think Matt Dillon's performance is what really makes this film as good as it is, because it is so strong. And when you're dealing with a movie that's a character study, you, of course, need a really good performance to reel the audience in. And that performance is exactly what it does. It reels us in, into this film. We get so compelled into this character and why he thinks the way he does. And I absolutely love that. Now, there are some things, of course, I didn't like. I think the movie, as I mentioned, is 2 hours and 30 minutes. And the pacing is a bit meh. I feel like the first, the first act, like the first 40 minutes, is really solid. You're intrigued, you're entertained. Then I think around, like, the third incident to the fourth incident, you're like, okay, this is getting a bit more of a slower pace right now it's not as energetic as it was in the you know the first act it's way more slower and you're like oh i'm getting a bit bored i don't think i don't think they're necessarily like really like, like those you know scenes and those incidents are terrible i just think the way they're in the pacing it's really long like this is a really long movie so that pacing it's kind of important to make sure 
it's a really, you know, good pacing length and not just a bit drawn out. Because then the audience are going like, oh, I'm getting a bit, bit bored here. I think there's some great elements in the second act and the third act. I think the last 20 minutes of this film where it just gets completely weird and bonkers with Verge coming in. I think that is all fantastic because then it leaves a lot for the audience to be like, oh my god. You know, I guess this discussion going around, you're thinking, what is this all about? What does this mean? And I think the ending, okay, the ending and what it suggests is honestly fantastic. First of all, we of course see hell. And it circles back to a previous scene in the film talking about the negative light. And the last shot of the film, of course, converts to the negative light. And then it just makes you, it just gets a lot of interpretation out there. I think this is one of those scenes because they don't directly explain it afterwards. So, of course, that leads for more interpretation, more discussion around what that ending could mean, rather than the entire film where they just explain what this meant and what that meant. So, I like the last 20 minutes where it just got completely weird and was like, at least the last 20 minutes is nothing like anything else that's in the film. I think the fifth incident has some really interesting moments. And of course, they bring the entire theme around architecture. Of course, the film's called The House That Jack Built. If you were expecting some kind of architecture documentary with this title, you're going to be very disappointed. Turns out the house that he made is made up of dead people, so it kind of fits in. A bit predictable with a title like The House That Jack Built. The entire movie is about him being a killer, and his job is architecture. So of course, the key to his house being the dead people. You know, I kind of expected that to happen. But it's just it's cool imagery, okay? It's cool imagery going in, and the last 20 minutes are wild. So I think those are elements that I really, you know, just, like, gravitate to. I really like those elements. But I think it's the, it's the entire middle act and the pacing that kind of draws me off. And that's why, well, that's why, that's why whenever I think of re-watching the film, I'm like, okay, I really don't really want to be sitting through the middle act again. Because, not because it's necessarily bad, but it's just, it feels like a massive commitment. Because, oh my god, does that middle act take a while like I think there's you okay, good elements into it but yeah the pacing I think is a key element just to find it kind of feels dragged out a bit but there are definitely moments of just brilliance in this film like Matt Dillon's performance to the way it's shot it looks beautiful okay the movie just looks gorgeous night it has good cinematography all those elements I really like there are certain you know, ideas that were presented that I also really liked. The ending and its, you know, themes were also really liked. I just didn't like the, ed you know, editing and the repeatability of certain clips and ideas they kept on repeating to you. It got very tiresome, but that's just my overall consensus on the film, so... Yeah, what a what an interesting look at this film. I've talked long enough, I'm getting tired. This editing process is going to be very tiring for me. I'm just gonna end it right now, okay? I'm lazy ending for a video, I know, but honestly, I gotta move on. I gotta do something else right now, so, uh, laters.